Hello friends. Now in the last video I gave you an overview of body's metabolism focusing a little bit more on overview of fat metabolism along with the important actions of insulin at tissue level. Now keeping that brief in mind and with that context of understanding of our overview of metabolism we have to specifically understand now how carbohydrate and fat metabolism changes in pregnancy. Now I told you that all these metabolic changes that happen in our body, the adjustment that happens to periods of starvation, to periods of exercising, fasting, even to pregnancy is directed towards achieving a purpose, isn't it? Now the purpose of that metabolic change that will happen in pregnancy is two things. A mother has to meet her own energy requirements. Of course, a pregnancy is a state where a lot of metabolic processes at various tissues, be it the uterus, the breasts or the placenta. So a lot with the basal metabolic rate is increased. So a lot of metabolic processes are going on, uh, you know, transport of fuels across the placenta, built up of uh, nutrition for the baby and for the mother herself. So yes, to meet all those metabolic requirements, mother needs to adjust her carbohydrate and fat metabolism. On top of that, she has to meet the energy requirements of the growing fetus as well. Now, let us understand these changes in that context. See, now pregnancy is a state of insulin resistance. That's a very characteristic state. Now, pregnancy is a condition of insulin resistance and this insulin resistance is helpful in pregnancy. One of the important things to note is why is there insulin resistance in pregnancy? It is because of the pregnancy hormones, hormones that are coming from the placenta. Now, insulin resistance happens because of a contributory effect of many pregnancy hormones. Yes, the most important being human placental lactogen, which I will call HPL. But human placental lactogen is not the only hormone which is responsible. Hormones like progesterone, prolactin, cortisol, uh, they are also responsible for insulin resistance in pregnancy. And insulin resistance increases, increases, you know, slowly, slowly over pregnancy and reaches the peak at maximum about 24 to 28 weeks around that time. And then it is going to stabilize at, uh, stabilize at a level. So, yes. The peak of insulin resistance is going to happen somewhere around 24 to 28 weeks. Now, moving on further, let's have a look at this scenario. Now, whatever a woman eats, right, is going to get absorbed by the diet. We all know that. And that could be glucose, amino acids, free fatty acids, all the vital nutrients and the uh, building blocks, right? Now, they are going to get, enter the bloodstream. And here I will show only one blood vessel, but you should understand that there are many smaller branches which are perfusing the placenta, right? So, yes, the building blocks are going to reach the placenta. And from the placenta, these building blocks will get transferred to the baby, right? So, ultimately, energy requirements, glucose by the baby, uh, amino acids to build up the protein stores of the baby, fat stores of the baby, glycogen stores of the baby. That is all dependent upon the maternal furnishing or maternal supply of these nutrients by way of this placenta. So, one important thing that the glucose needs to be transported to the baby all the time. It is not like the mother na, who is eating and then you know, glucose is rising up in the blood and everything. No, it's not like that. The baby is not eating. The baby is totally dependent on the placental uh, supply of these nutrients. So, constant supply of glucose has to be maintained for the baby. It's not like when the mother is sleeping at night and the mother is not eating. That doesn't mean that the baby is sleeping at the same time. So, baby is in constant need of glucose supply. Right? Now, see, whenever the mother eats, you see, if whatever one eats and blood glucose levels rise up, okay, and insulin is the hormone that takes up blood glucose and moves it into the storage site. If that would happen, how would all these nutrients reach the placenta? By the time blood flow will happen to the placenta, they will be taken up by the liver, the skeletal muscle and the fat stores. We don't want that. 
we want that there should be postprandial hyperglycemia after eating the mother's blood levels of glucose rise postprandial hyperglycemia because of insulin resistance so that this glucose this glucose gets diverted towards the fetus instead of being used up by the mother for her own energy needs so there is postprandial hyperglycemia now overnight when the mother is not eating glucose still moves into the placenta and is taken up by the baby so when the mother wakes up in the morning there is passing hypoglycemia it's not hypoglycemia to the extent that the woman will faint in the morning what i'm trying to say is from what her non pregnant levels of postprandial or fasting levels are from that there is decreased okay so there is fasting hypoglycemia and postprandial hyperglycemia if you consider in totality her woman's glycemic status is maintained during pregnancy okay it is when there is excessive insulin resistance maybe that woman is prone to insulin resistance she has some underlying insulin resistance to begin with right and on top of that insulin resistance happening during pregnancy so when it is excessive like for example she has a strong family history of diabetes mellitus she has uh, the pregnant woman has a mother who is diabetic or a father who is diabetic siblings who are diabetic or she herself uh, is having a polycystic ovarian syndrome so if there is a strong family history or a personal history of diabetes or a personal history of uh, pcos where there is underlying insulin resistance then that particular woman will become diabetic in pregnancy right so understanding this concept is very very important now this insulin resistance also is responsible for excess insulin production by the pancreas i mean see come on sometimes you know understand it like this i mean you know you are living um, let's say there are people who are living along the uh, you know railway tracks okay you have a house along the railway track okay now uh, each day every day there is all these trains going by trains going by trains going by somehow your ears are resistant to it you see you you know you you're no longer affected now that's the kind of resistance we're talking about okay so when there is insulin resistance there is excess of that train excess of that train excess of that train happening so there is excess insulin hyperinsulinemia or let us understand it in some other way let us understand that whenever there is insulin resistance you see the target tissues that that is where the insulin resistance is happening and the action of insulin is not taking place so to counter that insulin resistance now the body you know starts secreting more and more insulin in response to that insulin resistance at the tissue level whichever way is easier for you to understand there is excessive insulin production that is hyperinsulinemia this is important it's not like it's useless nothing is useless in our body it is important now this excess insulin is going to drive through in the first two trimesters of pregnancy storage storage don't you know i mean the maternal weight gain is happening in pregnancy mother is building up stores for the further 9 months of pregnancy a lot of that weight gain is plain and simple water retention by the body much much of it is water retention but yes a significant amount of that weight gain is also mother lays down protein stores mother lays down fat stores so fat stores protein stores they are laid down by the mother's body and this happens in the first two trimester so far so good so far so good but when the third trimester come there will be a change there will be a switch 
and I'll explain to you why that switch or why that change is important to take place. Understand here, at the same time, there is a lot of insulin resistance that has been building up, progressively building up, okay, peaking at about 24 to 28 weeks and that is when the woman is going to enter into the third trimester. So, even in the face of excessive insulin resistance and, you know, excessive insulin secretion and everything, you see, what will happen? If there is excessive insulin resistance and everything, at the same time, there is excessive production of human placenta lactogen, okay? Now, this is one hormone coming from the placenta, which is going to progressively increase, right? Right from the moment one gets pregnant till term, it is progressively going to increase in amount. Now, that is what happens in the third trimester onwards, right? So, third trimester onwards, there is excess increasing and increasing amounts of human placental lactogen that is coming about 10 fold, 10 times more increase in human placental lactogen. Now, the important function of this hormone is to stimulate lipolysis. Very, very important is to stimulate lipolysis. So, what happened in the first two trimester? Mother laid down the fat stores. This is like in, uh, you know, this is like Preparing for what is going to come next. What is going to come next? A period of excessive insulin resistance, right? Which is increasing. A period where change of fuels is going to happen. Why? Because now the fetus is even bigger in size. Okay, this is the third trimester now. Now the requirement of glucose by the fetus has dramatically increased. So, whatever the mother has to eat has to get diverted towards the fetus, that glucose. Even during periods of uh, when, when the mother is not eating, even then glucose supply to the fetus has to be maintained. For that, if whatever mother eats is going to go to the fetus, how will the mother meet her energy requirement? It's like what we call as a state of accelerated starvation. I mean, the mother isn't starving though. but a nutrients are getting diverted towards the fetus, right? So, what will happen? Excessive rise of human placental lactogen, it keeps on rising, keeps on rising as pregnancy progresses, stimulates lipolysis from third trimester onwards. This is lipolysis that is happening in the adipose tissue, okay? This is happening because of stimulation of the hormone-sensitive lipase in the adipose tissue. And what do we get? We get free fatty acids in the circulation, okay? Now, these free fatty acids in the circulation are used up for mother's own energy requirement. And glucose? Glucose gets diverted towards the fetus. Glucose gets diverted to fetus. So, this mechanism of supplying energy needs for the mother is important when there is, uh, you know, uh, 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 important to note here is this, that in between meals, when the mother is not eating, you see, and glucose is still getting diverted towards the fetus. In between meals, when the mother is not eating and the glucose is still getting diverted to the fetus, then what is happening? How is the woman meeting her own energy requirements by consuming free fatty acids? Okay, so it's not like she's starving, but she is using free fatty acids in circulation. So, pregnancy has been likened to a state of accelerated starvation. If she is taking adequate calorie intake, all these changes in metabolism are not going to adversely affect her. Problem will come. Let's say for example, a woman is fasting in pregnancy. And there will be times when people will come up and ask you, I am pregnant, should I be fasting? Pregnant woman should not be fasting. Let's say for example, when she is unable to eat, tolerate orally, she's having hyper MS, excessive vomiting during pregnancy or 
of course if she has dramatically restricted her calorie intake starving starvation restricted calorie intake she is restricted it too much pregnancy is not a state where one needs to restrict calories pregnancy is a state where you need extra calories so restricted caloric intake what will happen these are situations when your metabolic fuel glucose is anyways not entering the woman's body okay so she will generate more of free fatty acids she was anyways relying on free fatty acids in circulation now she is generated excess of free fatty acids so pregnancy is a state where our body or where a woman's body will not tolerate caloric restriction as good as maybe a non pregnant person would right so what will happen what will happen when free fatty acids are in excess in circulation and we talked about this in my previous video as well when we talked about how excess free fatty acids are going to move into the liver and these free fatty acids in the liver are going to get converted to ketone bodies so the same degree of nausea vomiting the same degree of fasting can be tolerated well by a non pregnant person but not by pregnant woman she will go into ketosis much sooner she will go into ketonuria ketosis acidosis much sooner right so that is important to note other thing important to note this ketosis or the state of ketonuria ketosis keto, ketonemia of course is not just harmful for the mother but this ketosis is harmful for the baby as well because your ketone bodies can cross the placenta very freely okay remember that your ketone bodies can cross the placenta okay some of the ketone bodies can be used up by the fetus but if they are in excess if they are in excess baby never wanted ketone bodies baby wanted glucose you are one is giving the baby ketone body so theek hai okay the baby uses some but if they are in excess then what will happen if they are in excess they are harmful for the fetus they can have a direct toxic effect on fetal tissues they can have a direct toxic effect on the fetal cardiac myocytes can sometimes even lead to sudden death right so excess ketone bodies once they reach the fetus they are harmful so these are the aspects of carbohydrate and fat metabolism which you should understand to make yourself clear about how situation how the metabolism is different in a pregnant woman as compared to a non pregnant state help you understand two important clinical aspect one is that a woman with pregnancy will not be able to tolerate these events as well as a non pregnant woman would and the other aspect is that because of underlying insulin resistance and because of the changes that happen post prandial hyperglycemia and fasting hypoglycemia that happen which are essentially important to take place during pregnancy but if there is pre existent underlying insulin resistance may be a strong family history of diabetes or a, a pcos patient or maybe excessive obesity for that matter even then you know you can understand that those are the women who are going to be more prone to develop diabetes in pregnancy something that we call as gestational diabetes right so keep these important uh, points in mind as far as carbohydrate and fat metabolism in pregnancy are concerned.